Well, we're looking ahead to the Federal Reserve's rate decision at 2 p.m. Eastern. And as of this morning, most people are looking for a pause in rate hikes, especially after yesterday's inflation print showed that prices are easing considerably in some sectors. Joining us now is Joe Brasuelas, RSM chief economist. Joe, good to see you here. Now, we know that one data point that you highlighted in a tweet yesterday is services inflation slowing to a 2.9 percent three month average annualized pace. So why does this stand out to you and how might it impact the Fed? watching and core services x shelter and the three-month average pace is slow to 2.9 percent broader services is around 2.6 percent over that same time and that puts the fed in a position where they can hold at least for another month before they have to consider hiking you know when you think about the financial tightening caused by the the turmoil among local and regional banks and you think about the tsunami of issuance the Treasury is having to do following the debt ceiling crisis, that equals about 75 basis points of stealth tightening. So I think the Fed really wants to, to just take a breather and assess just how the past impact of policy is now impacting the real economy. And I think that's, that's the key here. Now, you know, you guys had a great data viz up there earlier about the dot plot. You know, only three of them have to move up to that area to push the dot plot up so that the, the median is somewhere between 5.3 and a half and 5.6. And I think that's going to be the real narrative that emerges from uh, at least the publication of the statement. And then we'll take a look at what goes on in the summary of economic projections. And I mean, when you look at what some of the other central banks are doing, you know, still continuing to raise, although they did start at a later time than the U.S. Fed did. Where, where are we now then? Because that one CPI print, it took the, the Fed watch tool from a 75 percent chance of a pause to 95 percent here. So is it essentially a done deal? Is there any chance at all that we could actually see a hike? Well, of course, there is. All of these meetings right now should be considered live. Now, I, I don't think that's the case. We're going to get a hike with a tightening bias. Clearly, when you see the vice chair of the FOMC signal to the markets two weeks ahead of a, of a meeting, it's pretty clear what the Fed's going to do. Now, one thing, and you asked a really good question about the global central banks and the global economy. The U.S. is a, a little bit out in front of most of the other central banks, meaning that inflation's actually moving in the right direction and it's actually falling at an accelerating rate. Even if service, the service sector inflation defined broadly, you still see some stickiness there. Um, in, in Canada, things just, you know, were growing at too quick of a rate. And over, obviously in Australia, as China opens up and they're exporting commodities, the, the Reserve Bank of Australia did impose a surprise rate hike, but I just don't see that today. Now, I want to ask you about this 2% inflation target. Do you think the Fed perhaps needs to revise its playbook a bit? I mean, when you look at the significant changes on the supply side of the economy and when you look at some of the, the imbalances that we see in the labor market as well. Sure. The, the, the shocks to the economy following the pandemic, the de-risking away from China amongst the U.S. and its G7 trade partners, and of course, the, the, the long-run demographic issues around the U.S. labor market, all point towards a higher period, a period of inflation that's not going to look like the past 20 years. That will require higher interest rates and I think a new inflation target on the other side of this, which I think should be set right around 3%. Now, the Fed's not going to do that right up into the fact that they tell you that they've changed it, right? But we'll see today, perhaps uh, the medium term view on inflation may actually be pushed up a bit. And we'll, you'll begin, I think, to see lots of talk going forward this year and next around the appropriateness of a 2% target and the, the collateral damage that the Fed would have to cause in the labor market in order to get there. I just don't think there's an appetite for it in the country and especially in Washington. So then as we enter this phase of, of a Fed pause, whether it ends up being a skip or, or in fact a pause and a pivot, I mean, you see top line inflation and drivers of core pricing likely to ease notably in the coming months. What sort of numbers could we be talking and which sectors will be the standouts? OK, so the year over year base effects in, in energy and commodities clearly are what's going to drive the, the, the June numbers that we'll get in July. You're going to see the top line CPI be much closer to 3% then you are 4%. And then we're going to begin to, to see in months after that, it's going to be all about rents, the owner's equivalent rent in particular, and the cost of shelter. 
It's very clear that real-time data shows that rents have actually rolled over because of the way the Fed estimates it inside CPI. You don't tend to see, you won't tend to see that in real time. You get about a six month lag. So we had always pinned the second half of the year, really the end of the third quarter into the, to early fourth quarter when rents would roll over. And that's gonna provide substantial relief in terms of top line inflation and also core inflation inside the CPI. Now, the Fed looks at all of this, of course, but what they're really focused on is the PCE and core PCE. And that's where rents have a little bit of a less weight than they do on the CPI. Therefore, it's going to slow um, not as quickly as you'll observe in what the public looks at, which is the CPI index. And for people who are wondering in terms of a soft landing, a hard landing, mm -hmm. when you still have consumers spending the way that they are, how do you see things playing out? Okay, as long as we're producing north of 200,000 jobs a month, as long as households are spending somewhere between a 2 and 3% clip, it's hard to make the argument that we're going to fall into recession. Now, because of the past impact of, of Fed rate hikes, the financial tightening that we've talked about, we've assigned a 75% probability of a recession over the next 12 months. But let's talk about what that means. It means there's a 25% probability that we get a soft landing, and that's non-trivial. So if you run the model four times in one day, one of the times you're not going to have that, that hard landing, and you are going to get the soft landing. And to be honest with you, the, the, the way the data has been evolving, we may need to pull that estimate back in our mid-year economic review, which we'll publish in early July following the, the June uh, non-farm employment report. I'm sure we'll have you back to, to break all of that down for us. A big thank you there to Joe Brasuelas, RSM Chief Economist. Thank you for joining us this thank morning. Thank you.